was a serious woman. But at the same time, she had a wicked sense of humor. She was a proper country woman. She used to love her proverbs, you know. And when we had a little youth, she used to tell me proverbs time after time. She used to say, fire their must must tail, them think a cool breeze. She used to say, don't make your left hand, know where your right hand do. Because I will donkey, soon get catch. She used to say, don't be no roof of frighten, and no burn your bridge. Before you cross the river. See what say? Every day bucket a go a well. One day the bottom of a drop out. Is it careful? Dog of a near me supper. He says, what gone by the morning? Can't come good at evening. Yes, my mother that. and his wife Margaret and we go in and there was, nobody would dance with us Margaret Richard's wife Margaret and um, Richard's mother used to come from over the bar come dance with us in turn take it in turn dance with us in the blink of an eye you look around to see a 
walking home because we are walk home. But we either got to be half a mile in front of her or she half a mile in front of us. We can't walk together. Yeah. This is, this is what, was, what the situation was. <laughs> yeah, it was hard. It was, it was wicked, wicked. I used to be a cool man. And when I go to places like Turnby and all that and school over, and the kids them are called Blackie Cool Man, Blackie Cool Man. <laughs> and you want to see them parents are cool them. Freaky girl. Blackie yeah. Cool Man. Mm-hmm. Ah. I don't make it part of me. I and couldn't. Then. What's the point? We used to go to work during the week and look forward to Saturday. Mm-hmm. Because every Saturday there is a party in somebody's house. That's what Annie because said. Because we couldn't take part in the things in the town or the the clubs or what have you. So we have our own little thing. So every Saturday night, and in them days, it's not like today you go to a party and uh, you see people in our jeans and don't oh, care for them. Uh, no, that is color and tie and suit. What a world. My father, as I said, this world is a world with a workshop. <laughs> Meaning? I know me, I know what I mean. But... <laughs> Only the world with a workshop. Yeah. 
Lots of blacks, that's your attitude But welcome to the 21st century Maybe we push time from the day we arrived to the 80s and 90s was a, a beautiful place to be for the Caribbean community. Despite the troubles we had of people not accepting us when we first arrived, we kept together. There were just so many gatherings at church, at Luca, at the Caribbean Centre, and I miss these places. Luca was amazing. Just the smell of cigars, the shouting, the kids running about. The slapping of dominoes, the noise was unbelievable, but what a memory. All the ladies that used to cook the food, the curry goat, the rice and peas, the ackee, the sand fish. And Barber Joe, you could never ever go anywhere without hearing Barber Joe, you didn't need to see him. And Mr. Blues, my beloved uncle, always the master of music at whatever occasion. And church. <laughs> Every Sunday without fail. That generation that brought us here to this country and looked after us and nurtured us through really troubled times, that generation's almost gone. But their legacy lives on. They taught us well. And yet in Leicester City, it seems that we've been pushed apart by taking away the things that make us Caribbean, the Luca Center, Spectrum, Rattle Bookshop, the carnival, you have to pay to get in the carnival, why is that? Other cultural events like Ramadan, Diwali, the Colour Festival, Pride, you don't pay to get into any of those, but the black people, well for us it seems we're singled out, it's not good enough, but we are good enough. Carnival is there to represent the Caribbean and show you what a wonderful people we are and how welcoming we are. So welcome us, we've been here a long time. We've been through so many trials and tribulations, I wonder if things have changed. I came back to Leicester 10 years ago, after 22 years away, and I find myself frequently followed down the Welford Road by a of cars. And I'm wondering, why are you following me? I pay my tax. I'm a black woman driving a decent car. What is the problem? So has this changed? Has anything changed? Or are we still having to prove ourselves? Well, I'm not proving myself to no one. I'm good enough. I'm a decent human being. And I'm black. And I'm proud.